Good morning from Mission Control in Houston at the International Space Station Flight Control Room here at the Johnson Space Center. We are just one hour and change away from the homecoming of NASA astronaut Mark Vandehei and Russian cosmonaut Pyotr Dubrov after almost a year in space for those two and 176 days in space for Soyuz Commander Anton Shkaplerov. The trio are suited up in their Sokol launch and entry suits, ready for a deorbit burn, a four minute, 39 second retrograde firing, a braking maneuver of the Soyuz MS-19 engine to uh, complete uh, the trip uh, in orbit for this trio that undocked from the International Space Station almost three hours ago. Everything aboard the Soyuz spacecraft is in readiness for the deorbit burn that will enable the Soyuz to drop out of orbit and begin its descent back into the Earth's atmosphere with all of its uh, systems honed in on a remote landing site southeast of the town of Jezkazgan, Kazakhstan, and a parachute-assisted landing that will bring to an end for Vandehei and Dubrov what amounts to a 150.6 million mile mission, the equivalent of some 312 round trips to the moon. Shkaplerov wrapping up 176 days in space, Vandehei and Dubrov wrapping up 355 days in space. For Vandehei, that is a record for a single space flight by a U.S. astronaut. Late uh, Tuesday night, the uh, departing crew members gathered in the Rosviet module of the International Space Station to uh, say their farewells. Van de Heij on the left, Dubrov and Shkaplerov nearby, Oleg Artemiev, uh, the newly arrived Russian cosmonaut, uh, by the hatchway as they said goodbye to their Expedition 66 counterparts and made their way through the hatch into the Soyuz MS-19 to begin undocking preparations. They conducted leak checks at the docking interface between the Soyuz and the Rosviet module, then suited up in their Soka launch and entry suits and uh, began uh, final preparations for the undocking of the Soyuz from the Rosviet module. That undocking uh, occurred at uh, 2.21 a.m. Central Time, 3.21 a.m. Eastern Time, as the International Space Station flew over the South Atlantic at an altitude of 260 statute miles. Slowly but surely, the Soyuz backed away from the Rosviet module. A uh, backaway burn uh, of 13 seconds enabled uh, the Soyuz to move to a distance of about 70 meters from the International Space Station, at which point uh, Soyuz Commander Anton Shkaplerov took over manual control of the flying of the Soyuz to enable his uh, cosmonaut crewmate, Pyotr Dubrov, to move into the upper section of the Soyuz, or the orbital module, to begin about 30 minutes of uh, videography and still photography of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. Once uh, that was complete, uh, Dubrov uh, returned to the descent module, the center section of the three-section Soyuz spacecraft. He buckled up once again in the left seat, Shkaplerov in the center seat, and Mark Vandehei in the right seat of the descent module, preparing for the deorbit burn that is now just over 15 minutes from now. Mark Vandehei's uh, homecoming uh, in just over an hour for a parachute-assisted landing on the steppe of Kazakhstan will wrap up, as we mentioned, a 355-day mission for Vandehei. Uh, the completion of his second flight to the International Space Station puts him third on the all-time list of U.S. astronauts at 523 days in space behind Peggy Whitson and Jeff Williams. Vandehei, uh, in this mission, again, uh, he did not conduct any spacewalks, but uh, with his 355 days, he eclipses uh, the previous single spaceflight record by a U.S. astronaut of 340 days set by Scott Kelly several years ago. Anton Shkaplerov is wrapping up, as we mentioned, 176 days in space. He, uh, now with four missions to the International Space Station, will have logged at the time of landing 708 days in space. That puts him seventh on the all-time list of endurance leaders for human spaceflight. A contingent of uh, Ros Aviatsa search and recovery personnel and NASA support personnel 
uh, flew on an Antonov 26 aircraft uh, earlier this morning from the primary staging city in Kazakhstan of Karaganda on an Antonov 26 aircraft. They flew to Jezkazgan, the intermediary uh, staging city, uh, to the southwest. In Jezkazgan, uh, they have now boarded helicopters uh, at the Jezkazgan airport, ready to take off in sequential fashion around the time of the deorbit burn for about a 35-minute flight uh, to the southeast to the landing site that is uh, about 90 miles away from Jezkazgan. There, the uh, six primary helicopters involved in uh, tonight's landing operations, Russian Mi-8 helicopters, will uh, form a uh, circular racetrack oval pattern around the landing zone, awaiting the arrival of the Soyuz under its main parachute and uh, touchdown, after which they will land in sequential fashion in rather rapid fashion. Uh, the uh, RSC Energia personnel uh, that will be the first on the scene will erect an inflatable medical tent, and uh, the work will be underway to save the vehicle uh, and uh, to extract the three crew members from the Soyuz, place them in chairs by the capsule, and then carry them in those chairs to that medical tent where they'll get out of their Sokol launch and entry suits and into more comfortable clothing, flight suits, for a two-hour helicopter ride back to Karaganda. It is there that the crew will split up with Van de Hei boarding a NASA jet bound for Houston. The two cosmonauts will be on a Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center aircraft bound for their training base home in Star City, Russia, outside of Moscow. Last week, I had an opportunity to chat with uh, Mark Van de Hei on board the International Space Station for a few minutes, and he talked uh, and discussed his thoughts about uh, the deorbit burn, the ride home in a Soyuz vehicle, and uh, a wrap-up, basically the big-picture wrap-up of what his year in space has been all about. Mark, this will be your second landing in a Soyuz spacecraft. Knowing now the dynamics of a Soyuz entry and landing and how that all works, can you walk us through what one astronaut once called a ride comparable to an e-ticket at Disneyland? Sure, I will definitely do that. So um, the first surprise for me on my last return to Earth, my last descent, was how funny it feels when the hooks are unlatched from the space station and you feel like you're the cork being popped off a bottle. You just get, there's kind of a popping sensation, you just start drifting away. We don't fire any thrusters. It just feels very, very gentle as we drift away from the space station. After some time, we reorient and do the deorbit burn. Not very dramatic there until we get low enough where, to, so we start interacting with the atmosphere. And then you can see lots of flashes of light as uh, the, the well-designed spacecraft has parts that burn away to help get rid of all that energy and to pass successfully through the heat of reentry. And then there's this long period of waiting for the parachute to open. Last time, I was not aware of how afraid I was about what was going to happen as you're just waiting to find out if you're going to live or die because it all depends on whether that parachute opens up. I didn't realize how scared I probably was until I felt this incredible glee as I was getting shaken all over the place as the parachute opened up in a, or nominally in a, uh, a position where the spacecraft, again, nominally starts to oscillate violently back and forth. But some people that's very nauseating for. For me, I, was, I just had a wonderful sense of glee because I knew it was working out for us. And then after that... Uh, it's uh, Again, you have to have some patience while you're waiting to hit the ground. The uh, search and rescue forces, I expect, assuming the weather's good enough for them to be able to see us, will help us uh, by telling us how far above the ground they think we are at, at, while we're watching our data on the spacecraft. This time I'll make extra sure that my head is in the seat because we really hit very, very hard, hard enough where 
when I hit the ground, my first emotion was anger that uh, I would be hit that hard. It was all fine. No problems, no health problems as a result of the spacecraft. It worked very, very well. But I will not forget that emotion. And then there's another, there's some moments of waiting. Uh, last time we were on the plains of Kazakhstan in February, I was looking forward to smelling the, uh, the smell of dirt and vegetation. But on the steppes of Asia in February, there was just ice and the smell of uh, helicopter fuel as the helicopters that were helping get all the resources to us were in our vicinity. This time being later in the year, I'm hoping I might get a little bit of the smell of spring. We'll see. And uh, that's the whole story. You're landing uh, about uh, not quite two and a half hours before sunset on uh, March 30th. And they we're told the temperature is going to be in the 50s Fahrenheit. So it's probably not going to be as icy as you experienced the first time around. But assuming you get the opportunity to get those smells and the sensations, what's really the first thing or the one major thing you're looking forward to the most uh, once you get back on Earth? Uh, making a cup of coffee for my wife and myself and then sitting in bed and talking to each other while we're either reading or catching up on the news. Just having relaxing Saturday mornings is a wonderful thing. And then after that, i probably say guacamole and chips. Mark, a final question. We always ask this ethereal question, but in a big picture sense, if you uh, sit down in the weeks, months, years ahead to write the legacy of the ISS from your perspective, particularly for this past year, what would be your impression, your thoughts about the lasting legacy of the International Space Station? I think we will always look back on the International Space Station as being a fantastic example of what humanity can do when we cooperate like we do on the space station. This is a very challenging time for international relations. My hope is that in our attempts to, to further and find peace throughout the world, that these type of connections that we have can be maintained and find and serve as a path forward to try to find that common ground that we need so desperately to find peace. Mark Van de Heij, uh, it's been a pleasure to be working with you again and over the past year on this, uh, your second uh, space flight. Uh, your name etched in the, in the history books of U.S. human space flight, certainly. We appreciate everything you've done and wish you all the best and soft landings in Kazakhstan. U.S. record holder Mark Van de Heij, about to wrap up 355 days in space. We're just six minutes away now from the start of the engine firing, the deorbit burn, a four minute, 39 second retrograde braking maneuver that will slow the Soyuz down by 128 meters per second, allowing it to drop out of orbit for the final ride back to the steppe of Kazakhstan. Some 28 minutes after uh, the deorbit burn, there will be the pyrotechnic separation of the three sections of the Soyuz. That will occur at 6.02 a.m. Central Time. The only section uh, that matters is the descent module. Uh, that is where the crew is strapped in. Anton Shkaplerov, the Soyuz commander in the center seat, flanked on his left by Pyotr Dubrov and on his right by Van de Heij. The uh, heat shield facing the direction of travel to repel uh, the buildup of heat to about 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit around the Soyuz itself. The um, three uh, crew members will uh, enter the Earth's atmosphere at 6.05 a.m. Central Time. Uh, at about uh, an altitude of 61.8 miles. Uh, they uh, will soon enter into a plasma regime uh, where the peak heating around the Soyuz will begin. They exit that about five minutes later with a maximum G load on them of about four to five Gs. And then the important command to open chutes will occur just uh, about 15 minutes before touchdown at an altitude of 6.6 .6 miles, where um, the parachute deployment sequence triggered by a barometric pressure sensor begins. A main parachute cover is jettisoned, pulling out two extraction chutes, which in turn pulls out a drogue chute, and then in turn pulls out the main parachute. Just a few seconds before 
touchdown, soft landing engines will fire in a final braking maneuver, and the crew will be home. Touchdown is scheduled at 6.28 a.m. Central Time, 7.28 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.28 p.m. in Kazakhstan, two hours and 20 minutes before sunset. The weather at the landing site is uh, very, very good for today's uh, landing. Uh, scattered clouds at about 23,000 feet, moderate winds, nothing of any significance, and the temperature at landing time is expected to be about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. At the airport in Jezkazgan, uh, the uh, search and recovery personnel and the NASA support personnel are in their respective helicopters. Rotors are running. The first helicopters will be 